hair back. I'm sure you know the drill by now, but if you haven't seen our latest film yet, check it out now because there are spoilers ahead. Anyway, here's how we made Slasher. <laughs> So, Vic and I bought an Oculus Quest a couple months ago, and while I spent most of my time playing Beat Saber, I was also thinking of a way to tell a story around the concept of VR. We slept on the idea for a while, until finally, Victoria came up with an exciting way to incorporate the headset. You guys know that when we write these scripts, we really try to lean into what we already have available to us. And that means that you all see our apartment a lot. So when it came to writing this script, I tried to think of a game that would make sense taking place within your own home. And thus, Monster Quest was born. It wasn't until Aaron took over the second draft that the game's name changed to Slasher. We kept Monster Quest in the new game offerings, though, so that if Slasher was a hit, we could spin off to another chapter and next time explore the game of Monster Quest. Someone in the comments already mentioned wanting to see future episodes that explore those other two games. As usual, you guys are on it. Slasher quickly became a top favorite script of mine due to the addition of some creepy questions and riddles. I love riddles and scavenger hunts. In fact, the inspiration for the final riddle came from Die Hard with a Vengeance. You know, when Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis are solving Simon's As I Was Going to St. Ives riddle. No, 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 wait, I didn't get all that. Say it again. Not a chance. It really is the best Die Hard, and it just keeps giving back years later. And while she was busy working on the first draft, I leveled up to Expert Plus on Beat Saber, which of course gave us the idea to include this. Loading level two, Expert Plus. We shot the film in just two nights, not counting the opening shot, which we filmed last in Santa Barbara. Despite this empty looking beach, it was actually packed when we were shooting, so making it look like nobody was there took some time and a lot of patience. As you can imagine, the shoot itself was actually pretty simple, especially since we were going for this very realistic look, and the entire thing was handheld. When we finished shooting, we all turned to each other and said, wait, that was really quick, like this is too good to be true. And while that was the case for the actual production, it was most certainly not the case for post-production. Wait, are we not going to talk about my amazing camera work? Feast your eyes, dear humans, on Victoria's first professional camera movement. Thank you, thank you. I'm very proud. Of course, I had a great teacher. I spent the next three weeks pushing my computer to the absolute limits editing this film. I'm surprised it didn't overheat at any point, to be honest. Just the sheer number of graphics made render times crazy long, and I probably had to restart my computer like five times a day due to all of the technical glitches and Premiere crashing. And so I would play another round of Beat Saber while everything rebooted. Making the characters glitch on and off was pretty straightforward. I put the camera on a tripod and shot each action. Then we would clear the frame, shoot an empty plate, and of course grab some stills of our eyeballs to make those creepy white eyes. If you want to make those white demon eyes yourself in After Effects, I actually have a tutorial on my other channel, Cineguac. I'll leave a link in the description. Cross promotion. In Premiere, I would just cut out a few frames at a time, revealing the empty plate beneath, and I added a glitch effect every now and again just to distort the image. I also experimented with some simple 3D camera tracking, which I used to lock the red flashing arrows in place, and the cell door which slides open. If you want to learn how to use 3D camera tracking in After Effects, I actually made a tutorial for this as well, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Cross promotion. Once all of the VFX shots were complete, I created a fake handheld look by using the warp stabilizer effect in Premiere. The makeup and axe murderer design were very simple. Because the game host and axe murderer needed to look human, I didn't do too much. And can we just talk about these comments comparing Aaron to Nicolas Cage? Talk about zaddy. I applied a giant, jagged scar, complete with gross, crusted stitches across Wes's face. But let's be honest, Wes's beard does all the heavy lifting here. Aaron added the blood-spattered butcher's apron at the last minute, and voila, the axe murderer is upon us. Originally, I recorded a version of the host with my own beautiful voice, similar to the clown in our other short, Clown School. It was way more loud and cartoony, and while I think I did a half-decent job, I thought having our friend Nick, an actual professional actor, would do a much better job. 
He toned it down, added this posh British accent, and overall gave it a really unnerving tone. Very good. I knew you had it in you. And of course, all of the music and video game sound effects were done by Robot Disco Puma at his studio in Miami. He really is exceptional at what he does, so if you need any music or sound effects done, hit him up. <laughs>